TV, online and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 10. New at 10, after nearly two hours in the dark, South Moorhead residents finally have their power back. 750 customers lost power around 8.30 tonight due to some kind of an underground cable fault. Many of them got it back up at 9.30. Others had to wait until just a few minutes ago. An official with Moorhead Public Service tells us they're working to figure out the exact location of that faulty wire. If you're just facing all the stress of trying to get out there and getting stuck all the time, that can take a toll on you. Startling numbers show a sharp rise in suicide deaths across the country, and they hit close to home for farmers and ranchers. The new report shows that suicide rates among people living in rural areas are much higher. Valley News Team's Melanie Palmer investigates the alarming trend and what you can do to stop it. Boy, this is nasty here. Farming is Bill Hale's life. He grew up on the farm helping his dad and now he's running one in Aminia. Acreage we are is mostly soybeans, a little bit of corn, some spring wheat, and then sugar beets. But he tells us this season has been downright stressful. He has never seen it this wet. We haven't touched a soybean yet. And normally we'd be done by the 8th or 10th of October. And all that stress is adding to an already rising issue hitting farms nationwide. It's something Hale says he hasn't seen firsthand, but he completely understands why the number of suicides are up. Tempers usually are a little bit short during harvest just because you're so busy, but then you have the added stress of wondering if you're going to make it to the other end of the field. That puts a lot of hard times on people. Yeah, it's definitely an increase. Melissa Schultz, on the other hand, has been watching this trend very closely, and it especially hits close to home for her because on top of working with a mental health crisis response team, she's also a farmer. It's everywhere. It's the prices of the crops. It's milk, you know, for dairy farmers, milk prices low. Schultz says it's good to check on your neighbors. Don't be afraid to ask how they're doing and have an open conversation. Farmers don't call it depression. Farmers don't necessarily call it anxiety. It's anger. It's stress. It's I don't know what to do. That really turns into a mud ball. And that brings us back to Bill Hale. He absolutely agrees with Schultz. If your friend or neighbor, if you think they're kind of in a tough area, you might want to ask them if they've tried to talk to anybody. And while he and other farmers are struggling to bring in this year's crop, he's keenly aware of what being a good neighbor really means. I don't think, oh well, it'll be okay. It might not. In Amenia, Melanie Palmer, Valley News Live. If you're feeling suicidal, there is help out there 24-7. We have a list of local resources along with the number to the suicide hotline on our website. Go to valleynewslive.com. A drug bust in the Turtle Mountains of North Dakota has uncovered more than just drugs. Guns, ammunition, and cash were found in this multi-agency sting operation. Three men, Terrence Johnson, Anthony Wade, and Devante Edwards, have been arrested so far. Authorities found 231 prescription pills, 100 grams of marijuana, and roughly $19,000 in cash. On top of that, agents seized 200 rounds of ammunition, two handguns, and one shotgun. A 16-year-old is facing some serious charges after police say he robbed a 71-year-old woman at Knife Point in South Moorhead yesterday afternoon. It happened in the 1600 block of Bellsley Boulevard. Police say the teenager stole something from the woman and ran off. She wasn't hurt. The knife and the woman's property were later recovered. The 16-year-old is being held at the West Central Regional Juvenile Facility pending formal charges for first-degree robbery. He also, also has some outstanding felony warrants. A home in Becker County was trashed after getting burglar, burglarized at least three times last week. Cheyenne Loza says she feels violated by the crime. It happened while she was out of state visiting family. She had several items stolen, including dream catchers and money. The criminals also ended up, uh, or rather upended, her furniture and broke her mirrors. Loza says what bothers her the most is the burglars smashed her family photos. I don't know. It was, it was very emotional. <laughs> yeah, that too. The Becker County Sheriff's Office says they do have a suspect and they have given their investigation to the county attorney's office for prosecution.
North Dakota's Ethics Commission dismissed its first complaint today. Meeting behind closed doors, members said the complaint did not fall under the commission's jurisdiction. We expect that we'll get, we'll get complaints about various things that don't um, really fall into our bailiwick, so to speak, um, that are more appropriately handled by a different um, entity within the state. Goodman added the private discussion was to protect the whistleblower. North Dakota's Attorney General says a Jamestown tourist attraction violated the state's open meetings law when it failed to post a notice of a special meeting. Attorney General Wayne Stengem says the association operating Frontier Village held the meeting in September, notified the county auditor, but never posted it in the newspaper or elsewhere. Stengem says the Village Association must amend its minutes to add detailed recollections of any conversations held during the meeting and provide the minutes free to anyone who requests them. Two ranked teams, number one versus three. College game day is there and a battle of rivals. That's a recipe for the most exciting college football game of the year so far. Bison fans aren't missing a beat. Valley News Team's Courtney Lockie spent the day with three fans who say the trip to Brookings couldn't come soon enough. The migration south along I-29 has already begun. Several Bison fans are already in Brookings for the MDSU-SDSU rivalry matchup. Green, gold, and a cooler full of ice-cold beer. These are the essentials for Carter, Teddy, and Daniel, who are gearing up for the big weekend. It's just great seeing the boys do a great job out on the field consistently throughout each and every week. You can't give them more props. That's why we come to every single game is because of those guys, so it's pretty awesome. Carter and Daniel are North Dakota natives. They've been going to Bison games for as long as they can remember. Me and my dad usually pop up for a game or so every year or so, so it's a lot of fun. Get to see my friends, their kids and stuff that are around my age. So it's always a good time. These lifelong fans are showing Teddy the ropes. He came here from California for school a few years back, but this weekend will be his first time cheering on the green and gold. They said they had a ticket. They said they had room. I said, sure, why not? So it's going to be quite the experience to go and see NDSU versus Celtic uh, SDSU, I should say. The Jackrabbits were the last team to take down the Bison 33-21 to in Brookings back in 2017. But Carter and his crew aren't forecasting a repeat. For the most part, I hope, uh, I hope NDSU really kind of, you know, puts it in their place when it's down at uh, Brookings, South Dakota. They say the Dakota marker is staying up north. Go Bison! In Fargo, Courtney Lockie, Valley News Live. All right, if you can't make the trip to Brookings, not to worry. Join us this Saturday for the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show. Our coverage begins at 1 o'clock live from South Dakota with kickoff to follow of the game at 2 o'clock between the Bison and the Jackrabbits. It'll be on the KVLY and KFYR Bison Football Network. Valley News Live 10 at 10 continues with no wait weather. We appreciate you joining us. Here's a quick look at our river a flood warnings on the northern Red River Valley. We have rising rivers at the Drayton area as well as up near uh, Pemina and the Oslo area seeing a slow receding of the waters. Well, we do have rising rivers as well in the Fargo area and in the uh, West Fargo diversion as well as Kindred as rivers remain high, even in the James River Valley, still some troubles. But temperatures as we head into the late night hours, pretty fair, 37 degrees right now. There's a little bit of a wind bringing it down to around 30. That's what it feels like on exposed skin with the wind under 10 miles per hour. 38 degrees in Grand Forks. How about 40 in Devil's Lake and 38 in Jamestown as the Devil's Lake snowbanks continue to melt away slowly. 36 degrees in Detroit Lakes. Here's some cold air in the Rockies pushing into the uh, panhandle here of Oklahoma and the panhandle of Texas. And we have some cool air in place now after temperatures did reach the 40s today. And take a look at this. We have just a couple of clouds moving over our area. Otherwise, a very quiet pattern for the northern and most of the central plains until we get down into Oklahoma, southern Kansas, all the way down through Texas. And look at that. Snow falling in the panhandle of Texas. We've got school uh, cancellations and delays in Amarillo where a few inches of Fluffy flakes fell, and this system slowly winding its way through their region late tonight. Here's courtesy of our sister station, News Channel 10 in Amarillo. And uh, Amarillo by morning is going to look maybe a lot more like Fargo.
Here's a look at your forecast. Tonight, a band of clouds moving overhead, and the south winds will keep that atmosphere churned up enough to keep us from getting so cold. This morning, low 20s, including in Fargo and Grand Forks, had some mid-20s up there. We'll be near 30 to start out your Friday morning. Sunshine aplenty. There'll be more wind from the south at around 15 to 20 miles per hour. A passing cloud or three as we go through the afternoon, but all in all, temperatures will be on their way up, particularly out to the far west where we could see a few 60s out there. For us, no 60s, but still the most pleasant day in the last several. Again, though, we have to remember the winds starting out at 30, ramping it all the way up to 53 in the afternoon with a lot of sunshine and a few late day clouds. Sunset, by the way, how about that? 623. Here's a look at your hometown forecast. Oaks, 54 tomorrow. That's the same thing we'll see in Grand Forks. And off to the east of the Red River, a lot of low 50s out there as well. A few upper 40s in northwest Minnesota. All right, we had better enjoy the warm weather while it lasts. It does last into Saturday, but then a cold front moves through, cooling us off for Sunday. And then this cold air plants itself in place all the way through and possibly beyond Halloween. So... Get, get uh, outdoors and enjoy some of the sunshine tomorrow. Steve uploaded this beautiful photo of flooded fields. Uh, not so beautiful, I should say, as our uh, farming friends continue to struggle with very wet soils. 52 on Saturday before the cold front makes its way through. Uh, still a chance of some late precipitation. Sunday, though, downright cold. Next week, we stay cold with a high only in the 20s on Wednesday. And that's how we head into Halloween. All right. Thanks, Hutch. Mm -hmm. Later on Valley News Live at 10, fast-growing fires throughout California forced thousands of people to evacuate their homes.